Hello and welcome to webinformant.tv. I'm David Strom, your host and reviewer. Today we look at the high trust appliance that allows you to manage the access and deployment of VMware's ESX servers and manage the virtual machine guests that are contained on them. There are two parts of the product, a management appliance that lives inside your data center and a web browser based console that we're looking at here that is used to set up and control its operations along with giving you a dashboard view of what's going on. If you're running lots of VMs, you're probably concerned with limiting their access so that only a few trusted staff can make changes to their configuration. In a virtualized environment, it's easy to make copies of your critical servers, so you want to ensure that not everyone in your company has the ability to do so. This is where the high trust appliance comes into play. It works to segregate the management console traffic from the network that is used for the daily operations of the actual VMs themselves. You can see the two networks in this slide. What is happening is that the appliance terminates all SSL and management sessions between the ESX servers and their clients. This ensures that ordinary users can't muck around with the VM configuration, and you can also apply fine-grained security policies to particular administrative rights to enforce separation of duties. In addition, with high trust, you can use enterprise directory credentials. There is no need to manage multiple host-based credentials or use a shared root account to connect. For example, let's say we try to connect as a network administrator to an ESX host via SSH and do a simple Unix command PS to show the running processes. If we set up our security correctly, we see the following denial message because we've turned off access for this group of users. To set up the appliance, we bring up its web management console, click on the host tab to show the host summary screen where you can see what's being protected as we mouse over the entries. It also shows which protective benchmark is being used for each server. To protect another ESX host, we go to the tab and click on the add button and this brings up a screen showing here where we enter particulars. The most important part of the product is under the Host Benchmark tab. You can select from a variety of compliance benchmarks and set them up for different users to be able to just audit or also perform remediation. Here's a list of the different benchmarks that are available, including the Center for Internet Security, CIS, and ones matching VMware's best practices. To get more information on the CIS benchmarks, we browse on over to their website. Let's look at the VMware Best Practices Benchmark. Once we click on the Details button, we can see two columns to check off what we want to apply to our particular servers. We can just perform an assessment or assess and then remediate the server to comply with the particular benchmarks. If we go back to the host screen, we can click on a particular server and the Remediate button, and you'll see this green progress bar on the right, along with the last time it was assessed. Any good security should set up regular scheduled assessments. At the host screen, we select one of our protected servers and then click on Schedule Events button. This will bring up the screen shown where we can select the particular benchmark to run at the interval in seconds specified. I like the three levels of integration of the product. First is how it integrates with Active Directory, so you don't have to reassign particular security roles for your various staff. You bring up the configuration authentication menus here and enter the AD information accordingly. You don't have to make any changes to your existing AD schemas. There is also a demo mode that sets up 12 different roles so you can evaluate the appliance before connecting it to a live AD server. You can set up finer grained security roles under Policy Roles tab, and if we click on one of these, you'll see dozens of privileges that we can assign to each role. Speaking of integration, the appliance can grab policies from VMware's Virtual Center Management software. Go to Policies Resources, and you can see here the policies we've imported in our appliance. One final integration instance is how you don't need to use the appliance's web interface, but can access it through a plugin inside the VMware Virtual Infrastructure Management Client. It appears as an extra tab at the top of the screen labeled High Trust, and we can see the same menus that we were looking at on its own web UI. If we've done everything correctly, we can secure our ESX box to not allow any users who are not application owners to start and stop the VMs that are contained in it. Here you see we're connected using the virtual infrastructure client as a network admin user, and we try to stop the VM instance showing that we've been blocked. But as an administrator of the network, I can create a new virtual switch. What's missing? While High Trust Appliance also produces central audit logs that are great for compliance, the integrated log viewing piece, as you see here, still needs some more work. It's helpful, though, to ensure you're consistently deploying new VM server instances and can monitor events. 
Another thing missing is the ability to manage other hypervisors besides ESX, and of course HITRUST has plans for adding that. Here's more information about pricing. There are different schemes depending on whether you want to purchase the hardware appliance or just run the software application, and there's also a fully functional free version as well. Thanks for watching webinformant.tv. This has been David Strom. Feel free to send me email david at strom.com.